Yo, 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 yo. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another amazing edition of the Best Practice Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barrett. We have one, one, one goal to bring you the best thinkers, best coaches in the industry to help you create a better practice and a better life. And today we do exactly that with an amazing coach and human being and leader on the Actinal team. Her name is Dina Melgen, and she makes things happen around here. She also has tremendous insight on what it's like to be a coach and a team member inside an awesome dental practice. And today we talk about why you need a smart and healthy team. And it is truly one of the most important secrets you'll ever learn about running a dental practice. So hope you guys enjoy the episode. We'll see you soon. guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show. Gosh, this is so much fun because I hope you're having as much fun as we are because our goal here is to give you great information to help you create an amazing practice so you have a better practice and a better life. Is that a good deal? It's an awesome deal. And I have one of the most amazing team members ever. So her name is Dina and you're going to meet her in just a second because she's not only on my leadership team, but she's also she's the director of a lot of things here and helps us with the new client recruitment and how we actually talk to our doctors about how healthy their practices are. And today we're going to be talking about the difference between, well, not so much the difference, but how you have to have a healthy and a smart practice, which is critical to your success. So Dina, thanks for being on. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me, Kirk. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Now I always start here because you know, I talk to you almost every day. You're part of the leadership team here. You make a lot of decisions. You make things happen here. But I want people to know who you are. You know, you don't come on the podcast a lot. You're you're one of those people, who, you know, you, you had a lot of insight and help for everything. But, you know, you're like, okay, I'll give you the information. Um, but you're, you're a boss here. You make things happen. So give us a little bit of your bio, you know. And I think one of the cool things, I'm going to volunteer this, you didn't just start with Act Dental. You actually were on the client side with Act Dental yeah, before you became. Yeah. So tell I mean, us a little bit about your bio. For sure, for sure. So I actually heard about you, Kirk, God, when several, several years ago, I was working for a doctor um, who was really struggling as a leader. And we saw you speak, I think, in Kansas. Um, and from that point forward, I was really hooked. And we hired on ACT, so I got to go through our program as a team member, and then years down the road, I had the opportunity to to coach it. So you know that you know there was a big period of time that um, you know I was still working in practice, and I felt like you know one day I'm going to be part of the ACT team because I love your message, and um, and so you know I think that that concept is actually really important because sometimes it can be kind of scary as a team member when a coach or a consultant comes in. Um, you know, and I think that that truly is one of the things that differentiates us is um, the fact that our approach is centered around, you know, the team and really what the doctor wants. And so we kind of, you know, customize our approach to fit practices, which I think is super cool. So, yeah. Um, and, the, and the cool thing too, again, back to that whole point is you've, you know, you've sat in those seats, you understand, because yeah. there's one thing about saying how to do it, but then there's another piece where it's the application. And I'll say this and you can, you know, you can, I'd love to know your thoughts on this, but if you're a team member listening, what's really cool about having a coach is you have all these thoughts. You might be an amazing team member. You're trying to help this office and you're like, oh my gosh, we could be just so much better. And sometimes the doctors just got to hear it from somebody else that it starts to kick into gear a little bit. And the coach becomes your best advocate as a team member. True? Yeah, 100%. I mean, we want to, we want our teams to really feel like we're, we're part of the team. Right. We're not, you know, on the outside. We're not just joining these Zoom calls. We are part of the team and we're here to support the doctor and we're, we're here to support each individual team member. Love it. Love it. Now, today we're going to be talking about the, you know, the smart and the healthy team. And so 
I want you to describe first, you know, because we talk to our clients about this. And if you're a dentist, listen, this is really such an important thing. You want a smart team and you want a healthy team. Can you describe what that means, Dina? Yeah. So kind of as like a, a bird's eye view on it, like the it's really, really important to have both. And, you know, when I share this with my teams, I tell them, you know, being a smart team ne- means that we're super, super organized. We have systems and we track metrics. Right. We know the health of the business and being a healthy team means that we have a great culture. And to make it fun, you know, I tell my teams, if we're just a smart team that has that's super organized, but we don't have any fun, we're kind of like the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> and if we're just a healthy team that has a ton of fun and we're not organized, we're like a frat house. Right. So we have to have a little bit of both. And I actually think the healthy side is more important than the smart side. And the healthy side really consists of, um, you know, having a strong level of trust and having this great culture. And, you know, we talk, I don't want to get too far into the weeds with this, but we talk about the five behaviors of a cohesive team. And it starts with having a safety within the room and having trust with each other. Um, If we don't have that healthy side, your team members are going to nod their head. Yes. And it's going to fall through the cracks, you know, 24 hours later. Yeah. Um, You need to think about that first, that the behavioral side is more important than the smart side. Once we have the behavioral side, right. The smart side gets easier. Yeah, totally agree with you. And I want you to go back to that because this is so true. 25 years of owning my own business. Like, and if you're a dentist, you you know how this works. You crave a day where you can go in and you say to yourself, everyone is aligned here. Everyone is bought in on where we're going. You know, they're bought in on the core values. Those are your favorite days. Because like the five behaviors author, Patrick. Patrick Lencioni says, a team, and I'm going to paraphrase what he said, a team aligned around the right value system with the right people in the right, they can dominate any industry. I found that to be absolutely true. The other side of the fence is when you're not a healthy team, let's say you're smart and you're you're cranking it out. You're doing a couple million dollars a year, practice is humming along, but it's not healthy. You've got a whole bunch of camps going on in your office. You got the camp over there, you got the camp over here, and you're miserable. You are just absolutely miserable. And your brain never thinks about the team members that are great team members. You're only thinking about the squeaky wheels that are just getting fires going at the campfires, right, Dina? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, Put those two together. Now, I think we have to define smart too, because uh, a big thing in so many years of doing this is a lot of times dentists don't want to talk numbers. They don't want to talk about, you know, dollars and cents. Um, And you've got all extremes there. You got the doctors that are hugely money focused, and then you got the doctors that never want to, but it's actually really healthy to talk about data and numbers, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. We have to have an understanding if our, and now we talk a little bit about smart team, but in being a smart and healthy team, we have to know the health of the business, right? We have to know if we're healthy or not in each department. And so, you know, you know, we're talking about the smart side and tracking numbers, but we have to have as a team member an awareness of where we are and if our practice is healthy or not. And, you know, every team member needs to, to, have a piece in that and ownership for a number in order for us to, you know, reach our, our practices overall goal. And so, you know, I, I don't, I want, you know, our listeners to hear that, you know, as far as tracking numbers, like there's no emotion behind numbers, right? Um, they just tell a story. Yeah. And, you know, the first step is really determining like where we're at. And so we have to understand where we are and we have to consistently track things to to know if we're headed in the right direction. You know, a lot of times I'll talk with my teams and I'll ask them about, you know, how many patients we're reappointing. And they tell me we're reappointing everyone, Dina, everyone that comes through the door, we're reappointing them. And I'm like, all right, I love that. Let's check and see where we're at. And we look at our hygiene reappointment percentage and we see it's at 63%. And it's like, well, I never looked at the metric before. I didn't know what it meant. Well, Now we can say that, you know, we're not necessarily, we're not reappointing every single person and we're not going to know if we're doing well or not without actually seeing where we are. Yeah, absolutely. And you've, you've pointed us out many times and as we get all of our coaches aligned, you know, and coaching other dental practices, it's really important to understand, you know, that data is healthy. It's real. It's okay to win. 
it is okay to do well. It's not about the money or anything like that. That's the byproduct. But it's really good to put on a scoreboard a score and hold people accountable to that. A lot of times dentists run into the, well, they don't want to talk about that. And I'm afraid to talk about it. Well, you're not afraid. You're afraid to talk about it. So it never gets healthier. And then when you talk to somebody about it, they go, well, this is like the first time I've ever heard this, or you don't trust me, you know? And so I think it's really important. And environment, you talked about accountability, and trust. Those have to be done on the truth, which is data. And I've got one more thing to say about accountability. You guys have heard me say this many times if you listen to podcasts. Accountability is not defined correctly in the world. People go, oh, accountability requires accounting. It's a number. It's a, it's a data point. Like, people say, well, you don't trust me. No, I do trust you, but we've got to agree on a data point. So, and then Dina, you don't have any problems when you start talking to an office about like accountability and trust via numbers, right? They kind of get it pretty quickly. Well, we, we talk about the why first. And that's what I think is most important is starting with the why when we talk about the difference between a smart team and a healthy team. And one of the first things that I like to do is I like to ask everyone on the team to close their eyes. And I will ask the question, do we have any fear around tracking numbers? And I want you to raise your hand. And I like to ask that question because we all have come from a different background. And, you know, some of our team members have come from a background that was, you know, didn't have a great culture and it was all about numbers and that can be scary. Um, so it's important to recognize if you have team members that have fear centered around tracking numbers and job security. And if you see someone raise their hand, I would have everyone open their eyes and I'd call it out. Hey, a few of you, I noticed raised your hand. Let's talk about it. Yeah. What is that fear centered around? Have that conversation and help them to feel comfortable that, hey, that's not going to happen here. Um, we're only tracking numbers because we want to know if we're healthy or not. We want to know that the systems that we're putting in place, they work. Right. Because the only way to determine if our systems are working is by attaching a metric to it. Yeah. Like when we create a perio protocol, for example, we start tracking our perio percentage right? To determine what percentage of our hygiene results in perio. So I think it's, you know, numbers play a part in everything that we do. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, go a little bit further when you're, when you're building a smart, you know, team, you can start to make decisions based on data. You can make adjustments the next quarter. You can celebrate your success. Like most of our offices do because they never believe they could achieve some of these things. And so we make them track it on not only a quarterly, weekly basis, but also take a look at it monthly. And it's good to set goals for each one of these metrics and um, talk about that a little bit more and how important that is in the process. For sure. I like to ask my teams to actually color their metrics green yellow or red green means they're meeting or exceeding their goals yellow is like they're in between and red means they're behind so red means that they're 50 percent, or i'm sorry yellow means they're 50 percent or above and red means they're below 50 percent of their goal and i do that because it makes it fun like you know i have one of my teams um they have a tree up on the wall and every month they put a green yellow or red leaf on the tree to indicate how healthy their practice is overall how healthy that tree is overall you know, team members want to feel like they're really a part of this practice and they're contributing to the overall growth. And so I know a lot of practices, you know, they track numbers, but it's one person tracking them. Yeah. It's their office manager tracking them. And when she's calling out those numbers, I can tell you your team is it's going through one ear and out the other. Yeah. It's really important that everyone on the team is responsible for a certain metric that is related to their individual responsibility. Okay, Dean, I've tried this in the past. I'm a dentist. Okay, you, I have team members in like the, it's always in the yellow or red and it's been like a year and a half. And it's, so what do I do then? Like, how do I address that? Yes, yeah, such a great question. We have to talk about the countermeasures. And the countermeasures are all of the things that we need to do in order to move that metric forward. So if we're in the yellow or we're in the red, it's not, we're not slapping that team member on the wrist. We're talking about as a team, how can we rally around that department right. and help them to move forward? And let's say, you know, um, you know, your admin department, your accounts receivable is super high um, and you're in the red there. Um, maybe as, as a team, we can say, Hey, we're going to help our admin team answer the phone for an hour or two. So they're able to make calls. Yeah. That's how as a hygienist or an assistant, I can contribute to that, you know, to that 
team member changing that number, that department. Yeah. We all need to be in this to support each other. It's not about we're not on separate teams. Um, we're tracking different numbers related to our department, but we're as an overall, as an entire team, we're helping that department get better. Yeah, absolutely. And then talk about the green. Let's say I've got a team member or a couple of team members. We're always in the green. We still want to be talking about that. That's yeah. the perfect opportunity to celebrate and you want some insight behind it. So it's okay to achieve the goal, but there's also some knowledge behind the goal. And so talk about how we discuss that with dental teams. Yeah. So sometimes when we, you know, I have a lot of teams that are doing really, really well and they're constantly in the green, but it's really important to recognize how we got there because mm -hmm. oftentimes we don't talk about what, what happened in order for us to get into the green. And so you, you'll find you're riding this wave and you're riding high and then all of a sudden it drops because we never discussed as a team, like what were all of the things that helped us get there? Maybe that was a, an additional team member that we had during that time. Maybe we hired on a provider. Maybe we had additional, you know, maybe we started talking about our, our total production per appointment. I don't know, but we need to talk about what it was and what were the things that we decided on as a team that led us to achieving our goals so yeah. that we can continue those habits. Yeah, absolutely. And these are dynamic. You never, can you talk about this too? It's like, oh gosh, we, we did really well this year. We're a smart practice. We did all this. And gosh, we also have a healthy team. So we got the DMV and the frat house working together. They're going to constantly be moving. You know, you might, you, you might have one more dynamic going on with a team member or you lose a team member or you don't hit the metrics. It's something you have to always be working on, always growing on. It's almost like a garden. You got to be taking care of not only the flowers, the bushes, the soil, all that kind of stuff. It never, you just never set it and forget it, right? That is an awesome point, Kirk. Yes, it has to be a balance. So we can't use, you know, our team meeting centered around 100% of the meeting is talking about numbers. We have to have a part of our team meeting that centered around team growth and behavioral growth and part of our meeting centered around systems and numbers. So there has to be both. I also think it's important to stop and recognize where your team is truly at. You know, some of my teams, it's like we, we can't even talk about systems or metrics right now because the, the team isn't meshing. Right. You know, I had a, an awesome visit last week with my team and the only thing that we talked about was communication. That yeah. the entire meeting, but that's what we needed to discuss because that's what's going to best serve them right now. So really listen, listen to your team and, you know, talk with team members individually to see how they're feeling about, about things, because you might find now isn't the time to roll this out. Yeah. What we need to work on is the the health of the practice first, and then we can get to to the smart side, which is systems and metrics. Totally agree with that. And diagnosing it, that's why you need a coach. If you can't figure it out yourself, sometimes sure. the diagnostic part is more important than the treatment plan. I would actually argue it's always more important than the treatment plan because there are many situations, and I'm thinking of one practice in particular that you coach is like, we're it's a great practice but it wasn't getting anywhere because they had a quote unquote office manager who was very unhealthy and slowing down and manipulating the future of the practice. And so diagnostically, our job is never to let anybody go. It's to point out where the practice needs to go to be healthy and then growing the doctors to be able to make the decisions. And once they were able to make the decision, you can see how all of them start to mesh together. Can you talk about that sometimes diagnostically? You just, you know, and we even do this in our own company. There are challenges that happen. We got to call out the real problem first because we can chase all of the supplemental problems that come from this. But usually in any practice or any business, there's a real problem that creates a lot of other problems. Agree? Mm -hmm. And I think the best way to determine that, or maybe not the best way, but the most productive way to determine your biggest problem is really by asking yourself, what do I want the outcome to be? Right. And work backwards from there. Really, wh what is it that I want? And if this, you know, if this situation, what would have to happen in order for this situation to get better? And that usually answers your your question of what you need to do. Like, what, what is it that I need to do? And you ask yourself, what do I want the outcome to be and work backwards from there? And that should kind of give you an idea of your next steps. Yeah. And then psychologically, if you're a dentist, you understand how this works. If Dean is your coach, she's going to ask you, what's the outcome? <laughs> you're presenting the, the path and now you got to support the path with the decisions that go with the outcome because being outcome-based 
with what you want to accomplish helps synthesize all of your movements. It synthesizes all of your decisions and it creates progress really fast. Now I have 30 more questions to ask you, <laughs> Dina, because you're brilliant at this. Like, um, I want to ask you about this. I'm a dentist. I'm listening to this. I understand smart, healthy. I believe in tracking metrics. So I've got like 90 metrics because I've been listening to all these webinars. I want my team and I'm going to go in next week and tell them to track 90 things. Is that a good idea? And I'm kind of leading you with that question, but how many metrics do we track? Of course, that's not a great idea. (laughs) Um, I mean, of course, it's it's wonderful to be able to see all these metrics, but you're going to freak your team out. Number one. Um, Number two, I think that it's important to pick maybe five primary metrics, three to five. Um, I like to see more data, so I'm going to go with five here. I think five primary metrics. And now you're probably going to ask, what are those five metrics that we should be tracking? Well, it all depends on the it all depends on the practice. Right. I mean, there could be, you know, there's some practices that I worked with for years that have an awesome AR. Right. And but their perio is super low. So I think, you know, it's important to, to, like you said, Kirk, do a really diagnose your practice overall first and see where you're at, where, where you're at up against the, the benchmarks. And then from there, select five metrics, five of the metrics that you see the biggest, biggest opportunity in. Yeah. I think I love that word. Cause I was waiting for you. You know, we used to call them quick wins, but they're not so much. And I only use that phrase because it can tee it up to what an opportunity is. It's not always like the fire burning in the practice. Cause you're going to see some of these metrics and go, that's horrible. But there are some metrics in your practice when it comes to the smart side that you can, there's a ton of opportunity in them. And by making them healthier week over week, month over month, They are the wins that your team needs. They'll go, oh my goodness, we can do this. And what it does is it it layers this confidence. When you have a team that starts down the path of doing what Dean is talking about for a quarter, they go, we did it. And you know what happens? Collectively, they go, we can do better. And you go, what? And they go, yeah, I think we can do better because they've experienced those micro wins. And the micro wins compounded become big wins over there. You've seen team members come alive when they understand like smart and healthy and they get these wins quarter over quarter. The other thing, I'll just say this as a doctor or to you, doctor, your team members need you to be focused for 13 weeks. (laughs) (laughs) They don't want 90 ideas. Could you imagine a day? When you're like, hey, guys, we're going to do what Dina says. We're only going to chase five metrics and we're going to make them healthy. And you actually did it. That's three months. Those five metrics all got healthier. I can guarantee you your production went up. Your collections probably went up, too. You probably worked a few less hours because you were all working together. Anything you would add? Because you get to see this all the time. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's really important that, like I said, I mean, the, the number one thing is that, that I see in, in my practices that I coach is, you know, they'll tell me, yeah, we're tracking those metrics now, Dina. And then I'll join a team meeting and I'll notice that it's one person reporting on them because the rest of the team doesn't understand them. I think it's when you find out what those five metrics are, what, where does that metric, what metric, um, where does that metric tie to what department? Um, and then from there have one person in the department report on it this quarter. Um, they should have an understanding of, you know, what reports to pull in your practice software, how to find that information, kind of make like a, a guide on how to do that. And of course, in case that person is out on vacation, like there's somebody else that can pick up and, and track it as well. But there has to be, you know, everybody has to be able to contribute to, to this or it's not going to work. Um, we can't just have one person owning the numbers. Because even you, doctor, you're not owning the numbers either if your office manager is just telling you where we're at. Yeah, totally. So if you're a young dentist or a mature dentist in this, think about it. You have several decades of practice in front of you. And what an awesome path it is when you can have a smart and a healthy practice. It makes going to work a lot of fun. Any last thoughts you have, Dina, on smart versus healthy or smart and healthy when it comes to growing a dental practice? Sure. So last thoughts in that this is with anything. So in, um, in adult learning, we only retain 10% of what we hear, right? So what you guys are hearing today, you're retaining 10%. So I would encourage you to think about what we shared today, write a few things down and then take action because we need to hear it 
read it, write it, and repeat it. We can't continue to, to, to develop new habits or, you know, really implement new ideas in the practice without actually trying it out multiple times. Love it. Love it. Gosh, thanks for being on. I appreciate this. And yeah, I love being here. Yeah. So stick around and say goodbye to everybody else, but thank you guys for listening to the best practices show podcast. Hey, I'm telling you, if you listen to what Dina is saying, you're going to create a better practice and a better life. So, and if you struggle with this, don't like call us or call somebody. I'm biased. Call us. And you can speak to Dina or Gita on our team and they'll help you figure out where the opportunities exist and show you what is missing from your practice being a smarter or a healthier team. And it'll be one of the best days ever because when you create a better practice, you create a better life. There's no question about it. So do us a favor. Hey, if you guys enjoyed today, please share this. Share this with your friends because we love helping other dentists. And uh, if you guys have other suggestions, you're going to see we've got a lot of them lined up in the coming weeks. We want to make sure you're getting good information. I don't care if you're cutting the grass. I don't care if you're going on a walk. I don't care if you're on a drive. My hope is that you enjoy listening to this and it makes your life a little bit better. So until we see you guys next time, keep watching or keep listening to the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. Mm -hmm.